So Pompe disease is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder, meaning that both parents are carriers of the disease, and then when they pass on the genes that don't work, the genetic changes, when they pass on two changes, one from each parent, a child inherits those two changes. So it's a recessive disease in that both parents are carriers, and then the child has two copies of the gene that doesn't work, which allows them to not make the enzyme, so then they have the symptoms of the disease. So with infantile Pompe disease, as we know, Pompe disease is a spectrum from an early onset infantile form to a later onset adult form. And with the infantile disease, there's much less enzyme. So those babies present very early on within the first few months of life versus a later onset form where there is some residual enzyme. So over time, those patients and people have symptoms of the disease as they get older, the symptoms start to show. So we do know some mutations are definitely associated with infantile onset. Some genetic mutations are definitely associated with late onset. The IBS splice site mutation is generally associated with a late onset phenotype or a late onset clinical picture because what we can see is that we'll have one genetic change that maybe doesn't make much enzyme, but then the IBS splice site enzyme or genetic change makes some enzyme. So that gives you enough enzyme to make the disease presentation a little bit later versus if you have two very severe genetic changes or genetic mutations, you usually see those patients um, present very early on. Um, and then also that also ton of ties to this picture that we talk a lot about for Pompe disease, which is CRIM, cross-reactive immunomaterial. And that's one of the, um, the pieces we think about for um, ITI or um, um, immune modulation therapy immune tolerance therapy. So that also, those genetic mutations give us information about whether or not we should treat the children, the babies, with immune modulation prior to starting the enzyme. Because what we can see is when some babies start enzyme replacement therapy, they start to develop antibodies to the therapy. And those antibodies can um, decrease the response to treatment. So when we see that, when we first have a baby diagnosed with Pompe, in addition to knowing the diagnosis of Pompe disease, we also do this CRIM testing, and we determine if a baby's CRIM positive or CRIM negative. And that tells us, that gives us a little more information about what we should do in terms of immune modulation therapy, because that's something you want to do as soon as you start enzyme replacement therapy. And if you do that, it decreases the chance of having um, antibodies to the, to the enzyme, and you have a better course of treatment.